Okay, hi. So yesterday we um, so we introduced the the concept of outer measure, and so we define it. We denote it by M star, and we define it as a set function from the set of parts of R into the extended real numbers, so zero plus infinity. And it was defined in that way. It's the infimum of the sum of the length of the interval in such that a the union of this interval cover the the set a. Okay. So the first property that we saw yesterday was the following proposition, and we saw that for intervals, so let i be an interval. So what we prove is that the outer measure coincides with the length, at least for interval. Okay. So for interval. Okay, now we go on. Ah, yeah, as I, as I told you yesterday, the next things will be to prove the countable subadditive sub property of the auto measure. So, countable Okay. Okay, so we have that we consider a sequence a n of set in uh, in R. So be a countable. collection of sets of real number okay then we have that the following hold so the outer measure of the countable union of this set can be bounded from above by the sum of the outer measure of, uh, of the set AN. Okay. Okay, the first thing that we, put, that we observe is that if, so this would be somehow the easy case, no? So if we have that for some, even for one a n, the outer measure of an n is plus infinity, then it, it, it is trivial, okay? So, okay, if one uh, a n has um, infinite outer measure, then is triggered. Okay, the inequality um, is triggered. Okay. Okay, the other case is that so if we have that for any n on the contrary. M star of a n is finite. Okay, then we can have that given an arbitrary number epsilon positive. There is, this comes from um, 
from the definition of, uh, of M star, okay? There is a sequence, so there is uh, uh, a countable collection but we, we call it I N I. Uh, so think of it as N as a fixed and I which runs from one to infinity of, uh, of open intervals. Okay, such that we have that the sum of the length of i and i over the index i is less than m star of a n <coughs> plus here we choose epsilon to, to, to the minus n. Okay, so we can make it this arbitrary small. So we can, for instance, we can make, make this choice. Okay, let me call it. Uh, um, okay, let me call this inequality two star. So we, we observe that the collection uh, U um, I and I over I is countable. And this covers the union of the AN and it covers so the union of AN. Okay. Okay, so we have that. So we consider what we want to prove, the m star of the union of a n is times over n is less or equal than the sum over n and the sum over i. So we are, we are dealing with positive terms of, of n and i, which is less. So at this point, we make use of two star. is less than the sum of m star a n n plus <coughs> epsilon two times n. Okay, this is equal to the sum of over n of m star a n plus epsilon. Okay. Okay, now as usual, since epsilon is any, any arbitrary small number, we get what we want. So we get that the outer measure of the union of a n is less or equal than the sum over n of m star of a n. So basically, we, we see that so yesterday we saw that we want um, not the countable additivity, subadditivity property, but we want indeed for this joint set the countable additivity property. So this um, somehow is not enough. So the way to obtain an equal here would be somehow to restrict the set uh, in, uh, in, um, of the domain of, uh, of M star, okay? Huh? Yeah. I and I's are uh, open covers. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't. Uh, are open intervals? Yeah, I, I mean, um, you mean fix a n, think at n at the index n fix, and you see it has, uh, and also here, think, think at 
this n as a fixed uh, index, and you run i from 1 to plus infinity, and this is an open covering, a covering made of open intervals of a n, the one that you choose uh, in the definition of m star, okay? Yeah. This one, yeah. What the reason that we start to use epsilon and multiply epsilon by two? Uh, the, probably it's, uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, this is an error, it's an index i here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, no, let me, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, no, 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 n is, was okay, yeah, 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 n was okay. So, no, 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 sorry, no, n was okay. No, no, the thing is this, no, you fix, uh, so you deal like this, you, you fix epsilon, you fix epsilon, and then you, you know that by definition of infimum, uh, you, you can, uh, somehow you can make this right hand, uh, this part as small as you want, okay? So, so think at this, you fix uh, for any a n, think at this, so fix a n, and then instead of epsilon you can think fix epsilon 2 minus, if, you, if for you it's it maybe it's more clear as a reason. You have epsilon, then you know that by definition of outer measure, for any epsilon times 2 to the minus n, you can get, you can find, you can uh, find this uh, open covering such that this holds, okay? But, uh, <laughs> I mean, we can, we can change this uh, from Now, I mean, this is just a trick to have the fact that when you sum up on n, you get you just uh, you just obtain epsilon. No? This is the way. Okay. Okay, an uh, immediate consequence is the following corollary. So consequence of the, um, the countable subadditive property is the following. So if you have that, if A is, is countable, is a countable set, then you have that M star of A is zero, okay? Because yesterday we proved that the outer measure of the single set is zero, okay? Okay, and another corollary, which is really also easy, is that you can prove that the set, for instance, the set 0, 1, that of course you already know that is not countable for, a, for, other, for other reason, for other argument, you can see the fact that the set 0, 1 is not countable also is a consequence of what we prove. This is another way to see it, not uh, countable. Okay, because of course we know that m star of 0, 1, coincide with the length of 0, 1, which is equal to 1, and so it's not 0, okay? Okay, yesterday, 
at the end of the lecture, I introduce some, uh, somehow some terminology. But I will briefly recall uh, this definition. So we decided to denote with uh, this italic G um, the set of, uh, um, I mean, let, let me call it the collection of open set of R. Okay, with uh, uh, G delta, uh, G delta, okay, no, okay, G, with G delta is the collection of uh, set, set obtained as uh, intersection of, uh, of set, uh, of, of open set, of uh, um, set obtained as intersection of set, uh, set in G, so open set, then with italic F we denote the collection of um, closed set. So and in analogy we denote with F sigma uh, the collection of set of sets obtained, yeah, I'm um, sorry, uh, as uh, mm, countable intersection, it's important, as countable intersection and then as countable union of uh, set in half, okay. So the, I mean, uh, the, the aim of introducing this set is that they, they will provide us with a way to uh, somehow to approximate um, the Lebesgue measurable set by means of uh, somehow elementary set somehow. So now we will first give an example of this kind of uh, approximation. Allora, G, G and G delta. Uh, G is just the, the, the collection of open set of R. We choose all the open set. And here, G delta is the collection, is the set obtained as countable intersection, because in general, the union of open set is, is, uh, is open. So if you take the union, you will not add anything more. So just to, 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 to remind you, you take the intersection of open set. So it will contain open set and in addition all the set that are obtained as a countable intersection of open set, okay? Which in general is not, is not open, okay? You can find, okay? And in analogy here you choose, you consider closed set. You know that intersection of closed set is, so it clo is it's a closed set. So here you, you consider the countable union to, to add something more, okay? Okay. Okay, now yeah, you consider given A any set uh, in R, given A belonging to the set of parts of R, and any, consider any epsilon positive, then there is, you can construct an open set O, set O, so it's open, this is any set, this is open, such that A is contained in O, and in addition you have that M star of O is less than M star of A plus, plus epsilon. Okay, so do you have any 
Any suggestion on how to construct this set O, this open set O? Yeah, but you have to just to construct it. So think at the definition of M star. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So for uh, any epsilon. So the M star A is the summation of the lengths of all yeah. integrals uh, of some, some uh, cover. Yeah. Okay, such that this summation is infium. Okay, so from the definition of infium, adding any epsilon greater than zero to this infium, which is M star A, we get another cover, okay, which is the, 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 the union of all the integrals such that, okay, the summation so of the all would be okay, just what so would be of the union, union of, of the interval. Okay. Okay, so, uh, okay, you just think of the definition no, of uh, the infimum. Uh, okay, so you have that for any epsilon, po okay, by definition of, of n star as infimum, as infimum of something, uh, you have that the resist. Uh, accountable collection of open intervals I n okay such that you have that the sum of the length of I n is less then M star of A plus plus epsilon, okay? Okay, so you take O, as we said, as the union of these intervals, of these open intervals, and we are sure that O is open. And then we observe that, so we have to prove this. We have that M star of O. Now we use the, um, the countable uh, subadditivi um, subadditivity property of the outer measure is less or equal than M star of I n. OK, if you want, we, we can. Know that this is less, they coincide on the notion on intervals, which is less of m star of a plus epsilon. Okay? Okay, and this is one thing. So, this is a, a first, maybe elementary way to approximate a. Another way is the following. So, we claim that there is. Uh, a set G in the collection G delta, which was the collection obtained as uh, intersection of open set. Okay, such that A is contained in G, and this time we have more sharp inequality in the sense that we can say that M star of A is precisely equal to M star of of G. Okay. So to prove this, we use this fact somehow. Okay. So we have that, but by the, the, the first, uh, what we, we just proved, we have that for any K positive, there exists a set, an open set, okay, open. Such that OK contains A, and uh, we have that M star of OK is less than M star of A plus, for instance, 1 over K. 
Okay, so now we define. So how would you define G this time? Even without doing a lot of, you know, we know that G delta are obtained as of the intersection of uh, this OK, OK? So it would belong to G delta. And we have that A will be contained in, uh, um, in G because it's contained in any, uh, in any, um, Okay, no, since A. Yeah. Okay, I can say for K greater than zero, for K belong to perhaps M. Hmm? For K greater than zero, for K greater belong to M. Natural number. I, I didn't get you, your. Okay, your. So, okay uh, G delta is the, the set of all inters, all count, count yeah. intersections of all the sets. So if we say for K greater than zero, this intersection won't I mean, but same. countable, yeah, but you can include also the empty set and it, it comes uh, finite. Oh, okay, but okay, then zero. Yeah, so but, but I mean, you are interested in... Is is okay, we open it from zero to infinity. Yeah, but I mean, the interesting part is when k is large and this is small. I mean... This is this is uh, the, 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 the aim. You are not uh, interested in k. You cannot divide for which zero. Is the end set. Huh? Which is the end set. Okay, take k from uh, k uh, for any k put uh, from one to infinity. I mean k. I mean k. So k belongs to n. Hmm? So k belongs to n. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, usually with K, you denote uh, an integer, a positive okay. integer. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get you. Okay, so we have that A is contained in G, since A is contained in any OK. And uh, we have that M star of G is larger or equal than M star of, for, by this, of A. Okay, since G contains A, and on the other end we have that M star of G is equal by definition as M star of intersection of OK. Plus, which is which is uh, less than m star of a plus 1 over k for any k. So since this odds for any k, you get that m star of g is less or equal than m star of a. And so you combine these last two and you get what we want, OK? Okay, and uh, may I raise Okay, what do you, you can prove for the next exercise is that uh, uh, the outer measure is 
is translation invariant. Okay. Okay, now we start. We begin to <coughs> To introduce the notion of Lebesgue measurable set. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay, so as already observed, I mean, the other measure is not uh, what we want because it's not countable uh, additive. So we have somehow to reduce the domain of M star. So how to do this? Okay, so I will give the following definition. So we shall say that a set E <coughs> is measurable oh, with measurable I mean uh, the back measurable okay here in the following I just um, refer to the bag measurable set is measurable set because, but uh, this is the, the correct uh, definition, okay? The bag measurable. If <coughs> for any set A, we have the following the composition. We have that M star of A, the outer measure of A can be split as the sum of M star of A intersected E plus M star of A minus E. Okay, so this is just a definition. <coughs> so just let me recall you that you can uh, express A minus E as A intersected E complement, okay? So in, in that way you can have two intersections on both steps. Okay. okay, so just let me um, remark that only one, I mean, uh, you, you can see this equality as two inequality. So one inequality is uh, is always true because you observe, we observe that we have that A is contained in A intersected E union A, interse A minus E. So basically, by the subadditivity property, this side always holds, okay? So this is always true. <coughs> so somehow you can say that this is equivalent, uh, this um, property star, star would be you can say that star is equivalent to prove the reverse of this, okay? To prove that M star of A is less, is a larger or equal than M star of A intersected E plus M star of A minus E. Okay. So basically, in, in the following, we 
we just prove this when we want to show that E is measurable. Okay. Okay, another uh, remark is the following. Uh, you have that the definition of measurable set of, measure, of measurability. is symmetric in E and E complement. Okay, because you have that A, as I told you, A intersected E complement is A minus E and A minus E is equal to A. E complement is A intersected. So if E is measurable, then also E complement would be measurable, okay? Okay, then another easy So just to show some, uh, the first example of measurable set, uh, we have the trivial case. Okay, just like an example. Okay, you have that the empty set is measurable. Okay, because take a any set in the set of parts of R, then you have that M star of R is trivially equal to M star of the empty set intersected A plus M star of A minus empty set. Okay, this is just... <coughs> Okay, this is zero, and this is precisely equal to. Okay. Uh, then another example, another easy example, is that the full real line is measurable. So. Okay, this is also very easy. So. Just to be, you have M star is equal to M star of R intersected A plus M star of A minus R. This is the empty set. Okay. And then uh, we try to prove uh, step by step a kind of um, finite additivity property for the measurable set, okay? So if we have that, if you consider E1 and E2, two measurable set, <laughs> Then we have that also their union, their union is measurable as well, okay? Okay. So, so we want to see it. 
we choose a test set A, so let A be any set in R. And for first, uh, we use the fact that E2 is measurable, okay? Let be any set, and since E2 is measurable, then we have that. Okay, then we have that M star of Okay, um, we have the following. Here we consider as a test set A minus E1, okay? It's any set. Doesn't doesn't need to be measurable. We just say that this is any set. And we use the fact that E2 is measurable. So we have that this is equal to M star of A intersection, no, sorry, A minus E1 intersection E2 plus M star of A intersected E1 complement minus uh, E2. Okay. Okay, I call it one. Okay, what we, we want to prove, so the, our thesis is the following. to prove the following. We want to prove that, as I told you, one side of inequality is enough that M star of A is larger or equal than M star of A intersected the union of E1 union E2 plus star of A minus, no, M star, yeah, of A minus E1 union E2. Okay, this is our, uh, our task. Okay, so we observe that two, call, this is <coughs> a set equality, we have that A intersect the union of E1 E2 is equal to A intersected E1 union A intersected E2 minus E1. As from 2, we get that. Okay, we get that, uh, call it 3. M star of A intersected the union is less or equal by the subadditivity property of M star of A intersected E1 plus M star of A intersected E2 minus E1. Okay, now we we start from um, from here okay we'll just keep inequality 1 So we have that M star of A intersected E1 union 2 plus M star of A minus E1 union E2 
is less or equal, this is by 3, then M star of A intersected E1 plus M star of A intersected E2 minus E1 plus M star of A minus E1 U1 E2. Now we use 1. Okay. We use 1 in the sense that so we replace this one and this is the same. We can say that this is equal to M star of A <coughs> intersected E1 plus M star of A minus E1. Okay, but so far we did not use that E1 is measurable and we use it here, which is less or equal than. M star of A. Okay, great. Because E one is measurable. So this concludes the proof. So basically with the, all these few properties that we, we prove for measurable set, what we, what we can say about uh, the collection of measurable set in terms of algebra or sigma algebra? We still don't know if it is a sigma algebra we, because we just proved that the finite union is, uh, uh, is a closed operation. But we can say that at least it's an algebra, okay? So, as a corollary, okay, we can say that the family, and simultaneously we also introduce this uh, uh, notation with this uh, italic M, the family M of measurable set. Uh, is an algebra. Okay, so why? Because, okay, we saw that, for instance, the empty set belongs, is measurable. Then we saw that the definition of measurability is uh, uh, symmetric in E and E complement. So we have that if E belongs to M, if E is measurable, then we can also deduce that the complement is measurable as well. And finally, with the latter, we prove that if E1 and E2 are measurable set, then also the union is, uh, uh, is measurable. Okay. So, but we want more, but we will prove that also we have more property.
Okay. Okay, now we prove something which is a finite additivity property, a kind of this lemma. Okay, so again, let A be any set and we have that E1, E2, EN is a finite. So now we proceed by step. So we start by with a finite sequence of measurable set of this joint. So they must be also this joint because, of course, this joint. Okay, measurable sets. Then we have uh, the following decomposition. Then we have that M star of A intersected the union of EI where I goes from 1 to N is equal to what? Is equal to the sum for I which goes from 1 to N of M star of A intersected EI. Okay. Okay, just as, as a remark. Okay, this fact is slightly more general than the finite additivity property for M star, okay? Can you see why? So, finite additivity property would be take, uh, I mean, the set uh, and you, you would have that Okay, this is the finite additivity property for M star. So why this contain this? Because, uh, take A, A equal to R, R. yeah? Yeah. No, 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 because you, if you take A equal to R, this is, uh, this becomes a special case of this, okay? So this, yeah, this, because take A, this is just trivial, but better to, to show. So, and this is a, a finite activity property, okay? Okay. No, no, I have to prove this. No, no, this, no, no, I didn't get, I, I, I will show you. I, it's, no, it, it's necessary that yeah, I will show you. Uh, yeah, no, probably, I mean, I understand probably what you mean. In this case, we can get rid of star. I mean, but uh, now we still have to, to introduce, no, no, let, 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 let it, we will define the, the Lebesgue measure as the outer measure uh, for, for some special set, but this will come later. So for now, take it in this way, okay? <laughs> yes, we will, we will show later. Okay. Okay, we prove the lemma by induction. Okay, maybe, I mean, finite, okay, just to be a property, uh, I don't want to, 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 to list you to, of M star over measurable set. Okay. 
Let's put in that way to avoid confusion, okay? Because otherwise, f for any set, doesn't hold, okay? You have to, to this holds if e i are measured, okay? Okay, we prove the lemma by in action over, okay, of course, over the index n. Okay, for n equal 1, of course, is true. The property, call it Pn. Okay, Pn is, uh, okay, it's true, this is, okay, it's just a trivial. Okay, so we assume that is true for uh, the index n minus 1, n minus 1, so this is that. So for any equal, equal 1 is true because you just a, a intersected d1 is equal to, to the, the outer measure of a intersected d1 is equal to the outer measure of, is tautological. Okay. So we assume that Pn is true for for the index n minus 1 uh, and of course we want to prove that that it is true for also for the index n okay okay Okay, so we consider um, so we know by hypothesis that E1, E2, EN are disjoint. Okay. So E1 we know that Consider the following set equality. So we have the following. Okay, we can write, uh, think at A intersection, the union of EI with the index i goes from 1 to n intersected e n. This is equal to a intersected e n. So basically, this intersection is a redundant, okay? And you have also that a intersection, okay, the union of one from one to n of e i intersection e n c is equal to intersection of the union of e i i one to n minus one. Okay, here you have n minus one. Okay, now you use, maybe you, with a draw you, you, you immediately get this, these two. Here you have n and n, okay? They are disjoint, okay? Okay, now we use the measurability of the last set of En, so we have that by the, so this is probably partially answer to you, your questions. I don't know who asked uh, where we use, you ask where we use it, no, okay. You, you, okay, by the measure 
ability of en okay we have that so basically to, to prove this you use two fact the measurability of en and this induction uh, hypothesis no? so you combine these two fact and okay these two equality okay so we have that m star of a intersected the union of ei i from 1 to n okay and you use this as a, as a test set okay is equal to m star of a intersected uh, the union of e i from 1 to n intersected e n plus m star of this minus e n which is equal to the intersection with e n complement okay a intersected the union of e i i from 1 to n intersected e n uh, complement okay okay at uh, this stage we can take use this okay this is is are equal to uh, m star of a intersected e n because of this plus m star of a intersected i 1 n minus 1 e i uh, because of this okay okay and here in, the, in this passage we use the fact that they are disjoint basically and now we use the fact that p n minus 1 is true because we, we assume that it's true for n minus 1. Uh, OK, let me write here. Uh, OK, so finally we end up with the following. So we have m star of a intersected e n plus <coughs> the sum i 1 to n minus 1 <coughs> to a intersect e i okay which is equal to the sum for i which goes from 1 to n <coughs> of m star of a intersected okay e i no and this uh, proof uh, <coughs> this leads to the to the thesis okay Okay, the next step <coughs> would be to prove that indeed uh, the collection of measurable set is a, is a sigma algebra, not only an algebra but a sigma algebra. Okay.
here that the collection <coughs> and measurable set is a sigma algebra. Okay, just to, okay, we already proved this. We proved this we know. So what remains to prove is the, uh, the fact that the countable union of measurable set is still uh, a measurable set. So, so it remains. If you have a collection or sequence of a measurable set, then the union of them provides you with a measurable set as well. Okay, before um, okay, before proving this theorem, we shall need uh, a kind of auxiliary lemma. Uh, which basically tells you that uh, um, instead of dealing with any set, when you when you have to to, to, I mean, to, to to consider this union, you can express these unions in terms of a union of this joint set. Okay, which would be easier to to handle. So the lemma is the following. Okay, so let let E I be a collection, a sequence of sets of M. Okay. Then we will prove that there exists Another sequence, a sequence of set uh, we call them B I okay, still measurable because otherwise they are almost useless. B I Measurable, which are uh, B I R. These are their property. Uh, pair with this joint. Okay. And such that you have that B I. Any VI is contained in EI or any I. And moreover, the union of BI gives you the union of EI. So you have this three fact baby. Fact. Okay. So how would you define this BI?
Mm -hmm. So A1 is, B1 is equal to E1 because you have to start from something. And then B2? A, a, yeah, a, so you have this. Yeah, that. B1 is equal to E1. Then you have that. B2 is equal to E2, and then you don't need E1 anymore, no? Min minus E1, okay? Because this is already contained. Okay, and then you go on, so you have, of course, it would be B3, it would be A3 minus the union of A1 and A2. So Bn would be just An minus A1 union An minus 1. Okay. Okay, in such a way what we uh, immediately can say that this Bn uh, are measurable because we are doing just union and uh, this minus can be seen as a complement and so we, we stay in the, in, in the in uh, within the, this collection okay okay another fact that comes immediately is that bn by construction is contained in an okay for any n and okay, what remains to prove is that, for instance, that they are pair with this joint. Okay. Okay, let us prove. any n and then with n different from m we have um, b n intersected b m is equal to the empty set okay for okay for the computation for instance we can assume that the index m is less than the index n okay for uh, the computation assume that n is less than n. Okay, so we uh, express Bm has <laughs> An minus so we express by definition Bm is An minus the union of AI, all right, which goes from 1 to M minus 1. So in particular, this is contained in AM. Okay, what about BN? Okay, BN is AN minus, okay, I prefer to, oh, maybe it's, it's longer, but maybe it's, you have minus A1 union, union An minus 1. And this is contained in Am complement, okay? Because, uh, okay, basically because you have union, at some point you have some Am, and you have union, and you have N, okay? Because M is, is less than Okay, so this tells you that uh, they are disjoint. Okay. And finally, we have to prove that if we, s we s take the union, we don't lose um, nothing, anything. Okay, so we prove, it remains to prove that
that the union of this bi give you exactly the union of bi, okay? Okay, one side, of course, is, is trivial because, so you have that, you know that bi are contained in ai, so this union would be contain in this union, so we have that since the i are containing a i, you can immediately say that the union of b i is contained in the union of this b i. Okay, the reverse requires a bit of some argument. Okay, so we want to prove the reverse. Or namely that the union of the I are containing the union of the I. Okay, we start by we pick an element in this union and we want to prove uh, that it, it, it belongs also to the, the other union, okay? Okay, so let X be an element of the union of AI, I which goes from 1 to infinity. Okay, in particular, we observe that there must be an index N must exist, must be an index N such that uh, X belongs to A N, okay? So that X belongs to A N and simultaneously X <coughs> does not belong to the previous A J, you know? You can for any J less than Okay, so you take the, the smallest index, so it, should, it, it must exist. Okay, and in particular, we have that with this choice, we know that X must belong to what? X will belong to the set BN because I recall you that BN is made of AN minus this union of IN union I from N minus Y. But we know that X doesn't belong to those, so it, it, it must be here. And so we have that in particular X belongs to the union of the I. Okay. Okay, so we prove what we all we had to prove. And now we're ready to, to show that indeed the uh, measurable set, the collection of measurable set is a sigma algebra. And okay. Okay, uh, okay, you already, so what remains to prove is the countable, uh, the, the, the fact that the, the countable union of measurable set is still countable, okay? <coughs> okay, so consider a sequence EN. set. Okay. Okay, then
Okay, then uh, we consider this union, this countable union. And, uh, okay, but the lemma that we just proved, we can just, uh, without a loss of generality, we can assume that En has uh, the property that we just saw there, paired with this joint, uh, of course measurable, and the union, so the, the set that we introduced before, okay? But just let me uh, stress that it must be pairwise disjoint. So by lemma, by previous lemma, okay? Okay, so we can always make this assumption. Okay, then define this set, Fn, as the union of Ei for i, which goes from 1 to the index n. Okay, of course, Fn is measurable because we know that if we do a finite operation, it still remains in the, in, in the algebra. And, uh, okay, Fn is measurable as we get what? We have that, we have that. For any uh, test set A, in the set of parts of R, we have that, with the, the usual, we have the following, okay? We have that M star of A can be uh, split, it has M star of A intersection Fn plus M star of A. Oh, let me use uh, this way to express the defense, okay? Okay. Okay, let me uh, now uh, observe that um, Fn complement contains E complement, okay? E is, is the union of all the set, and this is uh, just the union of... Okay, so this is by this pra fact and the monotonicity of M star, what we get? We get that, this is larger or equal, M star of A intersected Fn plus M star of A, A intersected E complement, and call it star. Okay, now we use one of the previous lemma by a previous um, the one that I, I, I show you that leads to the um, uh, to the finite uh, additivity property. So this lemma, but uh, we have that since. EI are disjoint and measurable. We have that M star of A intersected Fn, which is nothing but the union of the first N EI, is equal to the sum of M star. Uh, the finite sum, 1 to n, star of a, intersected e i. Okay. Okay, now we insert this in star, this part here, so we get, so by the above, uh, equality and if we combine these two, what we get? We get that M star of A, M star of A is larger than the sum of I from 1 to N of M star of A intersected EI <coughs> plus M star of A intersected E complement. Okay, and call it star.
Okay, now what we can observe? So we, show, we, we see that the left hand side of this is independent of n, the left hand side, okay? So we can deduce that Uh, M star, if, if we let n go to infinity, we can say that if we let n go to plus infinity, we have that M star of a is larger or equal than the infinite sum from 1 to infinity of M star of a intersected pi plus the same term of a intersected pi complement okay so finally uh, brother if you want noticing can write A intersected E as a union of A intersected EI. We have that the sum of 1 to infinity of M star of A intersected EI. Now we use the countable subadditivity property and we yeah, have that this is of M star of the union of A intersected EI and this is equal to M star of A intersected E. Okay, finally. What we get, we get that M star of A is larger than M star of A intersected E plus M star of A minus E. Okay, which is this tells you that. E is indeed measurable, okay? And so this concludes the proof. Okay. Okay, I think for today we can we can stop here.